I'm Daisha Clay, host of The Classical Classroom, a show where experts teach me about classical music. I used to know very little about classical music, and now I'd like to think that I know slightly more than very little. What I have learned is that classical music isn't the obscure, static art form that I thought that it was. In fact, it's a dynamic force that's doing amazing things in the world right now. Welcome to a Classical Classroom sub-series, Music Works. We'll go behind the scenes at concerts, hear amazing artist stories, and look at all the ways that classical music is working in the world today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Classical Classroom. I'm Daisha Clay and here with me today all the way, uh, I believe in New York, uh, is uh, Sonia Yoncheva. Sonia is an opera singer who is a native of Bulgaria. She attended the Conservatory of Geneva. She's won many awards, including winning the world's most famous famous opera competition, Operalia, in uh, 2010. Sonia has been in concerts all over the world. She's collaborated with artists from Sting to Placido Domingo. Uh, her new CD, Paris Mon Amour, sorry about my French, uh, just <laughs> came out on the Sony label a few days ago. Sonia, welcome to the Classical Classroom. Hi, nice to meet you. So what are you going to be teaching me about today? Well, I'm going to tell you my story. This is exciting because your story is very interesting, and I think uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that like young people who are interested in, in getting involved in opera will find it very um, not only inspiring but kind of uh, educational. So, which is you know perfect since we are all about the education. <laughs> yeah. Well, so how does your story start? Well, it was you know um, a long story because my my story with the music is a big, big, big and long love story. <laughs> it started when I was uh, six year old, six years old, and uh, you know, as every child, I was wondering what what I would be in my life, what I will do. And I remember once I asked my mother, "Mommy, tell me, please." Everybody's asking me what I want to be in my life, and I really have no idea. And <laughs> she told me. <laughs> How that this, this can't be possible? You will be the greatest musician, the greatest pianist in the world. Wow! <laughs> and I said, "Wow, what is that? What is a piano?" I didn't even know what was it, you know, at that age. And it was really uh, fun uh, to me to hear that. And she said, "You know, I think I will make you uh, meet this instrument and the classical music, and I think you will love it." And I remember that she brought me to this audition. I was like uh, six years and a half and uh, they wanted me to sing something and I was so shy that I <laughs> just escaped I escaped from the audition. I didn't want yeah, to oh sing. My God. <laughs> yeah. And this was so funny because uh, then my mother had to convince me to come back and she had to, to, to speak with me. And I, I was asking myself, but why is she doing this to me? Why does she want me to, you know, uh, to expose me so much? I was really somebody very shy, very timid. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, well... I came back, I sang, and they said, oh, yeah, she has a nice voice and she can hear the music well. So let's start. And that's how I started my long, long, long love story with the music. Later on, I will continue singing in choruses, and uh, I was the lowest voice in the choruses for kids. Mm -hmm. So um, I would sing in the contralto, so this is really, really low uh, compared to what I am today. Because mm -hmm. when I was 15, I just discovered I could sing even the high notes. <laughs> so I started to be a soprano all of a sudden and it was really fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My mother wanted, of course, it's always my mother, <laughs> the beginning of everything. Uh, she she would put me in every kind of audition. So like uh, theater auditions, uh, singing, jazz, rock music. And mm -hmm. it happens that in a, one point she wanted me to do this audition for models. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I had to walk like this, like a real model, and I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> and the, the people would stare at me and they said, yes, she's nice, but you know... I think that she's not the kind of a model, so, <laughs> so probably with this nice face you have and you are you are speaking a lot, you, you're very easy communicating with people. I think I have an idea for you. Would you like to be a, a, a TV host? And I said, 
oh, no. <laughs> What? <laughs> and then, you know, I started to think about it and my mother pushed me a lot and she said, no, 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 you should, you, you should accept this. This is a good thing for you. It will help you for the future. Well, and then wasn't it on the show when somebody figured out that you could sing and like things kind of... you you kind of got launched into the world of opera? <laughs> Actually, it happens that I was singing in a chorus and uh, and uh, in one of the rehearsals came that girl who was absolutely so normal. You know, you, you could meet her in the street and you can talk to her as she was your, as she is your friend. And and she started to sing with this with this voice coming from the future is something coming mm -hmm. from another planet you know and I wanted absolutely to imitate that color I was so fascinated she was singing an, an aria by Mozart mm -hmm. and uh, I started to sing that at home and of course my mother was around <laughs> and <laughs> she she would listen to me and she said mm, I think you have talent you should try to do this and of course I said no again <laughs> because <laughs> for me this was All the time, some inputs, you know, coming from her, uh, theaters, opera, um, classical music, jazz, guitar, everything, piano and cinema, everything. And I thought to myself, I can't be also an opera singer. It's just not possible. But, you know, just the day after, I was already working with somebody. <laughs> and really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like and ab so after you, after you heard this woman, you're like, Like, I'm yes. going to try this. And you started immediately working with somebody to work on your operatic voice? Immediately, yes, because my wow. mother decided for me. And my mother said, no, 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 <laughs> tomorrow I call somebody and you will have your first lesson. So that's how I started. And I remember my first lesson was really amazing because, you know, it started with... Um, warming my voice mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing all of this um, exercise and going into the high notes and these high notes they just came out of me in a very natural way mm -hmm. I remem remember singing like B or C uh, with almost not um, not effort but what I remember was that this was making me um how to say uh, it was it was turning my head i mean mm -hmm. physically i could lose my consciousness so, so much i was feeling this air coming oh, into my no. head like you were going to yeah. pass out yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, i was feeling that i was going to pass out completely <laughs> <laughs> so this is your first experience with opera it makes you want to pass out <laughs> exactly and then of course I, I when I started to work with real you know to deal with real arias with real com with the composers with the with the parts I just fell in love so mm -hmm. much in love it was something really strong So where did you go from there? You you're like you you become inspired by this woman, you go out and you and you start mm -hmm. um, developing your operatic voice. Yeah. How did you kind of get into this world of of opera from there? Well, it was a hard job, of course, but I remember that I had a lot of doubts, you know, mm -hmm. um, if I was on the right way, is that the real color of my life? Should should this be my profession mm -hmm. and of course I was very young I was 17 and um, there were a lot of competitions in my country uh, in that time and um, I started to you know to to go to those competitions of course with no ambition at all because I knew I was young and I was just starting and uh, But I didn't. You were just kind of trying to get your 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 feet yeah. wet, basically. Yeah, and yeah, and to test myself, you know, and just to see if I'm really good. Um, do I have future in this? And uh, how am I singing? I don't know. I wanted just to try to try mm -hmm. to give a try to this profession. And uh, I remember that the first uh, competition I did it was in Sofia, so the capital of Bulgaria, mm -hmm. and I immediately arrived on the second place. And I was so, so amazed. 
<laughs> and like, I said, hey, wow. I am good at this. <laughs> yeah. And then it came another competition. I, w- I, I, had, I had the first prize and then another competition. I had the first prize and I said, wow, so this, this will work for me. <laughs> nice. I'm probably good. Yes. And so um, when I was 19, I, I understood very fast that in my country, which has a lot of uh, how to say tradition in the in the operatic um, in the in the opera in the classical music, but I knew that I needed something else. I mm-hmm. I wanted to experience some uh, you know to try some other colors of the classical singing, like the baroque music, the early music, and this unfortunately in my country is not so traditional uh, we would more concentrate on um, periods like the verismo or the bel canto and what, uh, what was that first one verismo verismo, verismo I, yes i know exactly. very little about about opera in addition to all of the things i know very little about. <laughs> so what <laughs> is know, that what does that mean verismo it's uh, it's a um, part of the of the musical story uh, where composers w- would uh, compose music based on real stories or and also oh. it's the, the vocality I, I mean the vocal line is really typical because uh, you can use um, a very uh, how to say direct sound as if you would speak that's huh. how it yeah that's that's how it feels you so, can so it's it. like true in story and sort of true in voice as well exactly exactly okay And so it's very, it's one of my favorite actually periods and uh, one of my favorite uh, vocal colors actually. And I'm great fan of Puccini and all of the all of all of the composers like Leon Cavallo and uh, of, um, of of the Verismo period because of this because it's very true. And even when you breathe, mm-hmm. you feel that the, the the feelings are here. It's not mm. so much based on the technique as as you would hear in the bel canto in Donizetti or even in Verdi. Uh, but Verdi, he was a man of, of the theater, so he knew how to compose his music. You know, it's just impressive mm-hmm. how he would integrate the theater in his music. Yeah, I've heard he, he was very, um, he had a lot of flourish yeah. ab- about, about his yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. So these were the kinds of opera that were um, popular in, in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, you, yes. Yeah, but but you were like, no, I want to try this Baroque thing out. Yes, I was curious because I always thought that, uh, you know, um, Monteverdi, for instance, uh, who is, uh, let's say, uh, the one who really, really, really uh, was the best uh, in, 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 and is the best in, in the early period, in the early music, um, he would use this kind of sounds, very jazzy, very um, swinging, like swinging, you know. And it's very impressive because he's using also um, the silences, like a, a musical part of of the of the piece and uh, i was really impressed but unfortunately in my country this kind of music was not so typical yeah. and um i wanted to try this so i start to apply in each of the universities in USA. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes, and I wanted to come in America because all of, all of my friends also came here. In, in you know, I wanted to be close to my friends, but it, somehow it didn't happen. But well, um, were you applying? For just like a general university degree, were you trying to get into like a music school? Yeah, to music what? schools, okay, absolutely. Okay. And I tried in all of the place, in all of the United States. <laughs> and <laughs> the problem was that in the in United States, the education was really, really expensive. You know, we're talking about times where um, in Bulgaria, the, the salary of a 
person w- would be like hundred dollars per month, and the education wow. compared to our salaries was really wow. really expensive. Yeah, so um, yeah, I couldn't manage to come here. But one day there was a pianist who I really really admire very much, um, a girl who came to me and she said, you know. Uh, 20 years ago, I uh, applied to the co- to the Conservatory of Geneva, and uh, they told me that I, I had not the right level to be there and to study with them. But I kept the the letter, the envelope, with the mm-hmm. logo of the conservatory. And if you want, you can write to this uh, conservatory and you can try there. And this is how it happened that I applied for Geneva, and mm-hmm. uh, later on I made my exams, and they accepted me, and my new life started. So I was I was kind of reading a little bit about how you know you you kind of get into doing professional opera and you you sort of kept being this person who was there waiting in the wings and who kept stepping in when other people had to bow out for different mm-hmm. reasons can you can mm-hmm. you tell us about that experience well, you know, it's not very easy to do that because... Um, right, how did you do it without throwing up? I mean, you're just like... <laughs> like, that's got to be such incredible pressure. It is, it is. But somehow, I always like to think that in life, we have nothing to lose. Actually, we have a lot to lose, but it's better <laughs> to think that as we, we have nothing to lose. <laughs> because, it's better not to think about it. <laughs> yes, because in life, the only one sure thing is the death. And uh, this mm-hmm. is the only one thing that can stop everything, really. Right. But then it's um, all, all the rest is about, it's about life, it's about experience, it's about, um, you know, just living the moment and um, trying to be true with the people and this is what I tried to be on stage actually and when I was replacing somebody or when I was uh, just singing my my stuff my things I tried to be true and this somehow is always um, um, a little victory for me <laughs> because to be yeah. honest is is the most precious thing for me and I am honest with the, with the audience too what was that first time when you know it's 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 a, it's a major opera in in like a major venue <clears throat> and you were called to to sort of fill in like what what was the opera what was the place what were the circumstances well, um, I did many times, but one of the most uh, significant, let's say, was last year when I replaced uh, Anna Netrebko in um, in a Faust in uh, in Guno in Guno's Faust. Um, she had to withdraw uh, from this part in three different theaters. <laughs> oh no! So, yes, and I and I, they just arrived three of them. <laughs> what was the what was the part that you were singing? Like, who was the the character? Marguerite, Marguerite, okay. by uh, by uh, it's in Faust by Guno. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I I couldn't say no. I was already pregnant, like three months. <gasps> uh, <laughs> yes, and I but I wanted to go for it because also I found that it was the right moment for me to sing that part, which is not very easy. Mm-hmm. And um, it, yes, I did it in uh, Covent Garden, and then later on in the uh, Wienstaatsoper, and then in Baden-Baden in the Festspiele. And, um, easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I really, I enjoyed really much this, three, three of these productions and also being in the skin of this girl. Uh, yeah. It was something really impressive because, you know, she would, in, in, a, in, in, the late, in a later point in the opera, she would kill her baby in oh madness. Gosh. Yes, because her, her lover left her and uh, she would kill her baby. And I was pregnant and, you know, for me, the feeling of doing this on stage was really, really strong. Is this kind of uh, waiting in the wings? I don't really know how, how it works. I assume <laughs> that you're kind of like um, 
the only analog I, that's coming up for me is like if you're an assistant conductor, you're always ready to, to <laughs> come out and conduct if the, no. something happens to the conductor. No, it's not like that. I was I was not ready at all. You know, I had only. <laughs> they I had just only called you five. on the phone and said, "Hey, Sonia, are you busy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would you like to do that? And I said, Oh my God, I don't know the wor- the, the part. Holy but I said, moly. Oh, you have you have plenty of time. You have six days to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's and so, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I I was playing the piano for a very long time, and uh, this helped a lot my uh, uh, my my preparation because it's when you are a pianist, you're used to big scores, and uh, you're memorizing a lot, and you're working a lot with the music. Mm-hmm. So um, for me, it it's really easy to um, to memorize. It 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 costs a lot of concentration, but I do it somehow. <laughs> That's. Something that I think is really interesting, you even though you weren't necessarily familiar with this piece, you were familiar with the music in general through mm-hmm. just it sounds like constant practice. Mm-hmm. Is is this a way that like young singers can uh, be prepared for any of these random phone calls that they might get from super famous conductors who are like, will you fill in for this famous opera singer? <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, you know, I think that if if it happens, if you're a young singer and it happens mm-hmm. to you, you should know, you should listen to your body and to your voice and to your uh, into your and to your experience. And uh, you should uh, think if you're ready to take this kind of responsibility because you know saying it later on like oh yes I accept it oh yes I learned it yes it it seems very easy but actually it's a huge responsibility because um, all those people and the theaters they are waiting for you and also above all you have responsibility um, to to yourself Mm -hmm. Um, you need to be satisfied just Mm -hmm. uh, after finishing this project you know you need to say to yourself okay I take I took the risk, but I I did the right thing, and this is very important for our uh, for our morale. How you say that for our uh, yes for our satisfaction for our um, mentality to be good to sleep well. Then you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it sounds like to me like you're kind you're kind of saying you know knowing the details is yeah, absolutely. is not necessarily the um, the important thing being yeah. sort of true to your own voice practicing mm-hmm. putting in the work in a general sense is what what is really important and those details it sounds like to you over and over again have kind of just fallen into place because you have been true to those things absolutely i was true to myself too you know i mm-hmm. i could i had to be because it's uh, the voice is expression of the soul and the soul is completely unlimited but um and it it can bring us to different worlds and different mm-hmm. different state mm-hmm. and um and i feel quite responsible to you know to be myself in the moment and to express my voice in the in the right way to express my soul in the right way with my voice <laughs> You're performing right now uh, La Traviata and yeah. at, at the at the Met, is that is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you've made it? <laughs> do you do you like have that, that sort of sense of like, all right, I've arrived? No, no, no. It's never finished, you know. In yeah. our job, it's a confirmation each day. We are we are um, in an audition each day, every day. Uh-huh. Every time you go in front of the audience, it's like a new challenge. And uh, it's never finished. Never, never, never. This is what I feel in any case. And um, I like this because this brings to, to my job something really... Uh, fresh, you know, it, it's unlimited actually, and it's something really fresh. It will last forever, the forever mm-hmm. youth. <laughs> yeah. So, like, not yeah. feeling like you've made it is actually kind of no. keeping you on your toes. 
No, I just started. <laughs> you just <laughs> I'm, I'm just starting now, you know, yeah. and uh, I have so many exciting projects in the future and uh, I would like to be in the good shape and always to keep this kind of um, fresh and curious way of seeing the, the things in the life, but also in the music, so I can bring it to the audience too. Well, before we go, just one last question. Do you have any any sort of general advice you could give to young people who are interested in going into opera singing? I would tell them never to give up and mm. also to always be true to themselves, first of all, and then to the others, and to feel very responsible of what they do. Responsible doesn't mean to be mean to be boring or to be serious <laughs> too much. It just right. you have to see the life in the light in the light way, and also you have to see the music in that way too. But mm. also to be very conscious that the music is something we have to defend, we have to serve, and for a long time, and in the very good way. <laughs> I like that the music is something that you serve. Yeah, exactly. You're in the music it's, service. I, I, I am like, yeah, in, in, in service of the music and also of these wonderful composers uh, who left all this fantastic uh, music to us. Well, that is a great place to leave the conversation. Mm -hmm. Sonia Yoncheva, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> it's been great having you on this show. Thank you, too. Thank you for your questions. I really enjoyed it. All right, everybody, that about does it for this episode of Classical Classroom. Thanks to audio producer Todd Toodley Holslander for twiddling knobs. Thanks to program director Sinjin Flynn for making me feel like my height is almost normal compared to his. Thanks to Sonia Yoncheva for being on the show today. Um, by the way, the music that you've heard in today's episode was from her new CD. Uh, I said at the top of the show, but just in case you didn't catch it, it's a uh, Paris Mon Amour. It's on the Sony label. We'll put links on our page uh, to information about Sonia and about the CD. Also, special thanks to composer George Heathcote for the use of his piece Regifting Lions in our new intro music. To learn more about George, go to georgeheathcomusic.com. Thanks to Angela Mitchell for her helpful suggestions on this episode. We miss you, Angela! Thanks to me for saying words, and thanks to you for listening. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>